From the last video, I hope you're catching on how diffuse lighting works. Essentially, light hits the surface. Some of that light is absorbed, but then some of that light escapes that surface. But as the light escapes that surface, it is spread in all directions. It is diffused, and that's the light we see. In fact, it's interesting when you're talking about light. If you look at something, for example, I have a red object in the room, but pick an object in the room that you're sitting at and look at it. Maybe it's your computer. My computer's black. It doesn't really matter. As light hits that surface and is absorbed, the light that escapes, we say that is the color of the object. For example, my red object, what's actually happening is that red object is absorbing all the greens and all the blues, and the only light that is able to escape from that red object is the red light. And so we call that object red, when really we, I should probably call that object, it's a dark blue green. Anyway, uh, that, I digress. Let's talk about diffuse lighting. To light a surface. This is our surface, if I can get my drawing program to cooperate here. This is our surface, and we'll put a light into the scene. This is a light, and a lot of people, when they're talking about light, they'll draw a light bulb or something to make it more friendly to you, but I, I don't want to do that. I want to... That's not how we actually do it in code. If It's not a light bulb, unless we're talking about a surface light, which we won't in, in, in these videos. I think of a light as an infant infinitesimally small point and if you could think of maybe this is a nuclear point that gives off a ton of light so I have all this light coming from this point and that's why we call it a point light go figure this it's called a point light it's not a light bulb it's a point in space that emits light and unless we put a cube there like I did in the last scene it, we can't see the light the lights just there now here's a surface and we're gonna have to light every part of the surface, but if I can light one part of the surface, then I know I can reapply that algorithm to all parts of the surface here. So I just want to talk about this piece of the surface right there. I want to light this part of the surface right here, and then I know I just need to apply that algorithm to the entire surface. Here's the surface. All right, I need to know how much light is hitting the surface. If I was right here, we'd have a nice direct light coming down and hitting this part of the surface, but I'm not right here. I'm over here. I'm not out here. Okay, out here it should be darker. As we go out this direction, it'll get darker as we go. We saw that in the last video. Let me let me bring that demo back up here and get that off the screen. You can see right below our light bulb right here, it's nice and lit because the light is hitting the surface directly, but the further we get out, get out here, the darker it gets. You see how it gets nice and dark out here because the light's not hitting that part of the surface directly. There's the amount of angle here. Ooh, I just kind of gave it away. The amount of angle from the light to the surface determines how much diffused light we see coming off the surface at that point. So that's where we're headed. Let's bring this back up. We're looking at a surface from the side. Here's our infinitesimally small light bulb. I want to know how much light is hitting the surface. Well, the way we calculate the amount of light that's hitting any point on the surface is by using a surface normal. If you go look at my game engine programming playlist, I talk about normals. I talk about normalized vectors. They're two different things. Normals are vectors that are perpendicular to the surface. Normalized vectors are vectors that are unit one. It's important to understand vectors and dot products. At this point, I cover all that in great depth in the game engine playlist. Go look at the game engine playlist in there. Go look at all my vector dot product, uh, vector normalization, all those videos to get brushed up here. But I want to normalize to normal. Normalize means I need a normal that is length one. We'll say that is length one. And I also need it normal to the surface, which means perpendicular. So I now have my surface normals is what you'll hear these called. They're just vectors that come off of the surface perpendicular and they're length one. Length one's important because of the math we're about to do. I also need a vector we call the light vector, which is a vector that simply points at the light. It also needs to be normalized as well. The way we get that vector is subtract the surface position from the light position. Okay, the light position minus the surface position gives me this nice long vector, this vector that's pointing at the light. But again, I need this vector to be normalized. So we'll call normalize on this vector, and that should bring this vector down to length one, right? So the surface normal is length one, the vector pointing at the light is length one. And at that point, we do a dot product. Okay, go look at my dot product videos. I'll call this the light vector. 
Capital L. Don't let vectors scare you. They're not that scary. I was always, I was always scared of these vectors. I don't know why. Vectors are not scary. We have a vector called n. That's the surface normal vector. We have the light vector. I'll call L. And if you talk to any old timers when they talk about lighting, they like to say n dot L, n dot L. And that means we take the surface normal vector and we dot that. That's a vector dot product. Again, my game engine programming playlist. We take the normal, the surface normal vector, and we dot that with the light vector. Well, when I dot those two, that gives me this famous equation we use all over in computer graphics, in games, and physics. It's the dot product. It gives me the magnitude of the vector n times the magnitude of the vector L. And magnitude is length. Again, go look at my game engine programming playlist if necessary. Gives me magnitude of n times the magnitude of L times the cosine of the angle. I hope I'm not off the recording area there. The cosine of the angle between the two. Well, what is the magnitude of n? Well, it's it's 1. Okay, this is length 1. n is a normalized normal. Okay, it's a normalized vector. This magnitude is 1. So I can actually replace this magnitude with the number 1. Okay, but wait a minute, wait a minute. 1 times anything is just anything, so I don't really need to state 1. I can just get rid of the 1. That's nice. And Oh, look, what's the magnitude of L? Well, we're going to normalize L, or we did normalize L. We took it from this nice long vector from the light position to the surface position, then we normalized it. Its length is also 1. Okay, but then 1 times anything is just that anything again, so I can take that out. That's why it was so important to have these normalized vectors, because the only thing I'm interested in with these equations is the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Here's the angle between the two vectors. We'll call theta because theta is a nice variable we use for angles all over the place. And so we're left with cosine theta, but I'm going to move it over here so it's a little more visible. Cosine theta, man, drawing with a mouse is rough. And why do I want cosine theta? <laughs> Because cosine theta is a direct relationship to the amount of light that's hitting this surface at this point. I hope you're familiar with trig. If you're not, uh, this will still hopefully make sense. But, but the cosine function, if I can draw it here, here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. Here's the value 1. Here's the value negative 1. And I guess I'll do this in degrees, even though I like radians a lot more maybe it makes sense in degrees I'm gonna put 90 degrees right here this is 90 degrees and 180 degrees will be out here one that's an eight 180 degrees and the cosine function does something like that that's really ugly you know what let me let me actually pull it up there you go I love Google I can just Say, hey, give me cosine of x, and then all of a sudden I get this graph, and I can drag around the graph. Let me clear that off the screen for now. At 0, cosine is 1, but then as we get further and further along, eventually we get to pi over 2 here, which is equal to 90 degrees. You can see that cosine it goes to 0. So cosine up here is 1, cosine 0 is 1, cosine 90 degrees is 0. And we're really just interested from here to here. If cosine goes negative, then we'll say that's no light, and we'll talk about that situation in a second. I'm really just interested from here to here. That'll give us our lighting. Let's go back to my diagram. I'll bring the diagram back up here. And actually, I'm going to change this diagram up a little bit. The surface normal, that perpendicular normal that I, I just erased, it's uh, it, that normal is true for all the surface. So here, perpendicular normal. Oh, look, I can move it over here. It's still perpendicular. It's still normalized. Still normalized. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. And so I can take all these locations and and say that's my surface normal. The surface normal is the same for this entire plane. Go figure, the entire plane. And it works the same for the teapot and the torus. We'll, we'll get into that later. For now, I got these surface normals. And then I'm going to draw the light vectors. Okay, here's my light vector. Here's my light vector. Here's my light vector. All these red vectors I'm trying to point towards the light as best I can. Maybe that one wasn't so good, but 
hopefully you're getting the idea that the further away we get from the light, the bigger the angle. The bigger the angle, the bigger the theta between the two vectors. For example, theta right here is zero. There is no theta. And cosine of theta will be one. And that means one times our color here will give us a nice bright surface. Okay, theta gets a little bit bigger here. You know, maybe I'll say that's 10 degrees. And so cosine of 10 degrees is not one, but it's pretty close to one, so we'll say 0.9. All right, and then, oh, look, theta is about, I don't know, I'm guessing 20 there. And I don't know, what what is the cosine of 20? I could look that up, but hopefully you're with me. This is 0.8. We'll get 0.8 of the amount of light. Right here we get 1 times the amount of light here. Right here we're going to get roughly 0.8 times the amount of light right here. 0.8 times the color of our light versus 1 times the color of our light. We're taking 80% of the light here. We're taking 100% of the light there. And so the further we get out here... Let's say we get right here, and maybe that's 45 degrees. And cosine of 45 is roughly 0.5, 50% of the light. So this point on the surface will be lit half as much as this point on the surface right here, which, which hopefully makes sense when we go back to this demo. The let me let me attempt to draw all these surface normals here. Surface normal right here. Surface normal right here. Surface normal right here. We'll do all the surface normals. Surface normal, surface normal. And you can see as I draw the lighting vectors, well, this vector points to the light, and then this vector points to the light, and this vector points to the light, this vector points to the light, points to the light. And the more theta we get between the surface normal vector and the light vector, right here we have a lot of theta, right here we have zero theta, right here we have just a little bit of theta. The more theta we get, the lower percentage of light we get on the surface. Okay, right here it's nice and lit, nice and bright. Right here it's kind of bright, but not as bright as right below the light. Then we get darker and darker and darker out here because there's more theta between the surface normal vector and the vector that's going towards the light. And that's nice. Cosine theta gives us that nice direct relationship. That's that's actually a realistic lighting model to get take cosine theta between the surface normal and the light vector. That gives us our diffuse light, and that's what we're going to do. That's the math we're going to do in our code in the next video.